Welcome back to AlgaJS. Today's question is leak code 57, insert interval. So you're given an array of non-overlapping intervals where interval i is equal to start i, end i. Represent the start and the end of the ith interval and intervals is sorted in ascending order by start i. You're also given an interval, new interval, which is equal to start and end. That represents the start and end of another interval. So insert new interval into intervals such that intervals is still sorted in ascending order by start and intervals still does not have any overlapping intervals. Return intervals after the insertion. Okay, so in this question, we just need to find if there is an overlap between the new interval and the intervals, and we need to insert it into the correct order, removing that interval. So we need to merge potential intervals that are overlapping. So here we have one, three, and six, nine, and the new interval is two, five, and the output is 1569. The reason for that is 1, 3, and 2, 5 are overlapping. So we take the smallest from both of them, which is 1, as the first value, and we take the largest, 5, as the second value. So it's 1, 5, 6, 9. And in example 2, we have this intervals array here, and the new interval is 4 and 8, and this is going to overlap with 3 and 5, because 4 is greater than 3, but less than 5. It's going to overlap with 6 and 7, because six and seven can be found within four and eight is also going to overlap with eight and ten so like all the other interval questions we need to start by drawing out the intervals to give us a visual representation okay so this is what we currently have we have one to three we have six to nine and we also have the new interval as two to five and we need to insert this and remove all overlaps as you can see there is clearly an overlap here right so this is where the merge will need to be but before we even do this Firstly, we already know that the array is sorted, so there's no need to sort this. Secondly, let's carry out, say, an edge case. Say we have an interval that is, say, minus 1 to 1. Do we need to merge this with anything? No, because there is no overlap with the new interval that is here. So we can just insert this into our result array. So let's say we have the result array down here. If, for example, the last value, so we have start and end. So if end at this interval is less than start at the new interval that we're going to be inserting, then we can just insert this interval. So that'll be a potential edge case, right? Now we can focus on merging these two. So there is an overlap here. We have current with start and end. We have new interval, which we'll call new i, start and end. And if current start is less than new interval end, because remember, we've already covered that base case where the end value of the current interval is less than start we'll just push that into res so we don't need to look at the end value now we just are concerned with the start value of current so we check the start value of current against the end value of the new interval if it's less than then we need to update this new interval to equal the minimum between the current start and the new interval start and that will be the left value so that will be one and then we also need to compare the end values of the two and that will be the second value so that's going to be five now before we push this into res we need to compare or we need to look at the second interval here so this is going to be the new current we're going to have start and end we're going to check if interval at start is less than new interval at end it's not so based on that condition we can push this into results so one and five okay because there is no overlap here we don't have to worry about that then all we need to do that is the case is just loop through the rest of the current array so loop through the rest of this array and add whatever is left into res so that's just going to be six and nine okay let's look at the second example so let's draw this out with this let's populate the result array so we said that if intervals at end so the current interval we're on is less than the new interval at start then we can just add it into the result array so we can add one and two directly into the result array so we don't have to worry about that so that has now been seen we move on to three and five end is not less than start so we check the start to see if it's less than end in this case it is so start is at three the end of the new interval is at eight the start is less than the end so we can create a merge from this so we take this value from the start because it's the smallest between the two and we take this value from the end 
because it's the largest of the two. So let's just expand this out now. So this is what the current new interval looks like. We're going to update the new interval over here as well. So it's going to be three to eight. We've now seen this one, so we can remove that. Okay, so we move on to the next one. Is the start of this value less than the end of this value? Yes, it is. And we have an overlap because the end here is greater than the start over here. So again, we're going to update the start and end based on this information. So the start is going to be the smallest of the two. So it's going to stay as this value, so as three. And the end is going to be the largest of the two. So it's going to stay as eight as well. So we've seen this interval now. So we can remove it. OK, now we're on this interval. So we have start and end. Is end greater than the start of the new interval? Yes, it is. So we check the start. Is start less than the end? No, it's not. But this right here at the same value at eight is still classed as an overlap. So what we'll do is we'll call this current. So if current at start is less than is what we've been going with up until now, or equal to new interval at end, then we update new interval. So we need to make sure that we're checking for the less than or equal to in this case. We have an overlap, so we're going to update the start value and we're also going to update the end value. So the start value is going to be the smallest of these two, which is already three. And the end value is going to be the largest of these two, which is going to be 10. So we can expand this now, expand that outwards. We have now seen this. And now we move on to the last interval. So we'll call this current start and end is current end less than the start of the new interval. No, it's not. So we check is current at start less than or equal to new interval at end. No, it's not. All we do now is push new interval into results, three and 10, and then we push current into results, which is 12 and 16. And that is the final output that we're looking for. Time complexity for this algorithm is going to be O of n because we have one while loop which we're traversing through a number of times. And then space is going to be O1. Even though we're using this result array to populate our output, it's considered the output, so we class it as O1. So let's write this out. So res is equal to an empty array. We're going to utilize while loops throughout this, so we're going to have an index which we start off at zero. We're going to initialize start as zero and end as one to make this more readable. And then while i is less than intervals dot length, so it's inbound and intervals at i end is less than new interval at start. We're going to push into res intervals at i and then increment i. Because there is no overlap between the current interval and the new interval, we just push this interval within res. Then we'll have another while loop. So while i is less than intervals dot length and intervals at i start, so the start value is less than or equal to new interval at end. Then in this case, we have an overlap, so we need to merge the two. So we're going to merge new interval. So we're going to say the new interval at start is going to be equal to math.min new interval at start and intervals i start. So we're comparing the two start values and we're grabbing the smallest. And then we also need to update the end value, which is going to be the maximum between the two. And then we just need to increment i again. So once we've looped through all the intervals where the starting value of the intervals is less than or equal to the end value of the new intervals, once we've exit all of those, we can just push into results, new interval. And then there may be some intervals still left within the intervals array that we haven't considered or we haven't checked yet. So we need another while loop. just to push in the rest of these intervals into results. 
and then we can return res. Okay, let's run this. Okay, so there's a spelling mistake. Let's give it another try. Submit it. And there you go. 